Hi, I'm Bamboo HR. Yes, the actual software. Mom was a one, dad was a zero. And my job is to help growing businesses find and keep great people, which is really hard right now. But here's the thing. Hiring the right people the right way leads to good retention. Smooth onboarding leads to good retention. Performance management that actually works leads to good retention. Not to mention easy to use payroll. Retention! Try it for free at BambooHR.com. This is Scientific American's 60 Second Science. I'm Christopher Intagliata. When paleoanthropologists eat lunch with biomechanists, well, let's just say the small talk can get pretty technical. Some of us would have a cooked potatoes, and other people would bring raw salads, and they would just spend longer time chewing their food than us. And this got us uh, thinking about not the, just the temporal amount of time that it takes to get for your food, but are they expending more energy than those who are, who are eating cooked food? Adam Van Kasteren of the University of Manchester says, luckily, there's a machine to measure that. It's a clear chamber you slip over your head, looks like an astronaut helmet, and it measures the oxygen you breathe in versus the carbon dioxide you breathe out. That's a proxy for how much energy you're burning. Van Kasteren and his colleagues got 21 volunteers to sit in that apparatus for 45 minutes just to get a baseline on their metabolism, and then they gave them flavorless gum to chew on for 15 minutes at a time. If you ever have to chew something for 15 minutes, it's much longer than you think. (laughs) Sometimes you have to like remind people, keep chewing. (laughs) And boring is the key point here. I mean, it's like if you've ever chewed gum way too long and it's lost its flavor and it's just this thing, that's that's what the participants were chewing. Co-author Amanda Henry of Leiden University in the Netherlands explains that rather than cooked potatoes and raw salads, they needed something with no taste or smell because anything appetizing would set off a chain of digestive reactions. Saliva and digestive juices would start flowing, and that activity would swamp the metabolic measurements related to chewing. And those measurements were significant. Turns out chewing a soft gum boosted the volunteer's metabolic rates by 10% above baseline. A stiffer gum revved up metabolic rate by 15%. Such a large difference on such a small change in mechanical properties in the chewing substrate was was what really like opened my eyes and and made my jaw drop a little bit. No pun intended there. (laughs) Van Kasteren says energy expenditure might go up even more for tougher food items like carrots, nuts, and seeds. The results are in the journal Science Advances. Now, before you ditch your workout routine, keep in mind that chewing the gums fired up metabolism about the same way standing at a computer would or reading a book. It's not going to the gym and lifting weights, right? You're not building up giant muscles with chewing, but it's still a process that can consume a lot of your energy expenses during the day. And while humans may not spend a lot of time chewing, especially considering the cooked and processed foods we eat, I mean, how long does it really take to chew a chicken nugget? The same is not true of our primate cousins. Orangutans and gorillas spend up to six and a half hours a day chewing, And it's possible our human ancestors did too. That's something that natural selection can work on, right? It can change tooth morphology or muscle architecture in the feeding system to increase the energy that you're getting from your food. And that may give you a competitive advantage over your neighbor who's rubbish at chewing or something like that. So researchers say the work could give scientists a new evolutionary lens through which to interpret fossil remains, especially the body parts most commonly left behind, the teeth and the jaws. Thanks for listening. For Scientific American's 60 Second Science, I'm Christopher Intagliata.